welcome back to The Curators, a podcast about game projects on Kickstarter. I'm Marcelo. I'm sorry I missed last week. I hurt my eye, didn't want you to see me like that. <laughs> also, if you're listening to a fan noise in the background, it's because it's too hot in here. I'll try to kill it in post, but if you listen a slight hum, which I hope you don't, but anyway, if you do, it's my fan because it's too hot in here. <laughs> okay, I'm Marcelo, as I said. You can find all the games from this episode as well as plenty of others at our curated page at kickstarter.com slash gamerati. You can also find links to each of these projects I'm talking about today in the show notes of, of this episode in the podcast version at thecurators.gamerati.com and on the YouTube channel. If you're a backer of any of these projects, we'd love to hear from you. You can Email us at thecurators at gamerati.com and tell us why you're backing a certain project so we may feature your email on the podcast. Um, by myself, again, I don't know when or even if Joey comes back. I know he's very busy. Let's see what I can do by myself. Starting with a vest. It's a pirate fantasy board game where captains explore the seas in the shadows of the mainland empire. It's a competitive, it, co it also could be a cooperative, and it has a team game gameplay mode. It's a board game by Gnarly Tree Games, and the Kickstarter project goes all the way to 16th of November. They need 25,000 US dollars to make it. So, Avast is um, a modular board game, you don't even you don't have act, an, an actual board. You make the board with tiles, small tiles that represent uh, seaways, uh, islands, uh, uh, forts, and other places. And the interesting thing is that you represent your captain, your your crew, with a miniature, a highly detailed resin miniature uh, and it's for how many people? Two to six players. So you can play. Uh, uh, competitively against all the other players, you can play kind of competitive, kind of competitive, not, um, um, cooperatively. And there is a special version of the game. It, I think, it depends on uh, some add-ons being uh, liberated. But it, you can play with a three versus three or two versus two team. Uh, it's it. It intends to be a not very long game with only two people, about 40 minutes, and with the, the maximum six people, about two hours. So it's an average game, I would say. Uh, it comes with 12 captains. Each one has different personalities, advantages, disadvantages, powers. And with each of the captains, you explore the sea, uh, a, a fantasy version of the Bermuda Triangle or the Devil's Triangle, which is on the other side of the globe, I believe. And there's always the threat of, first, other pirates, the, the, the pirates, not parrots. Although I think there's one with a parrot here. No, but okay. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, no, there's a guy with a pig. And there, are a lo there's a lot of uh, sea. Uh, threats, sea dangers, including uh, sea monsters, and there is always the looming threat of the mainland empire. Just like on our real pirating days in which the pirates had to uh, worry about the Spanish Armada or the British Armada. Uh, it, since it's a fantasy world, you can think of any way you want, any, any kind of uh, landlocked civilization you want. The board is modular. You make a completely new board or setup every time you play. It's not going to be the same. There's way more tiles than you will ever see all the, com all the combinations in the board at the same time. And it has a economy element. It's not a new role game, but it, it borrows some of the, of the mechanics of economy games. Because there's also a maintenance that you have to do with the islands you've kept, you captured and you maintain. You leave crew in the island. The, this, this crew, the, island, the islands you, you have, they will develop and produce booty for you because that's what drives pirate economy anyway 
and you can you have to keep defending them because other players might as well capture your islands from you. The game is driven by events and uh, Gnarly Tree games try to make them very cinematic, very very adventure-like. Uh, every round you turn a card and give, that card gives a player a chance to be part of the story of this world, reshaping politics or geography or legends. So you start with a tile with, with one single island and all the other players around the table. And as you sail, you try and capture more and more tiles, more and more islands. Uh, each island will give you more crew and more resources. You should, as I said, leave defenders to stop other captains from raiding your islands. Or you can maraud and claim islands from the other captains. Uh, the combat is basically uh, broadside the other ship. <laughs> if somebody moves in too close, uh, they are represented by the resin miniatures uh, uh, that are in the format of the, the captains. You can charge and board their ship and steal their cargo or just try and sink them. Every, each, each option has risks and rewards. It really depends on your strategy. Uh, through the bounties, you accumulate victory points, which in the game are pirate reputation. So uh, the more reputation you have, the better chance you are of winning the game at the end. In front of you, in front of every player, you have, how can I say, it's not a playmat, it's a tile with the stats of your captain, with the stats of your ship, the amount of repair, of, uh, of damage, of ammunition, of bounty, and you have tiny tiles representing the your crew. You can have a lot of different crew, all the illustrations are very realistic, very 18th century, 17th century like drawings and they, are, they also have a lot of uh, tokens on top of them that represent the resources your crew has, the resources your ship has. There is a total of 100 unique crew members that can be part of your crew. It's a lot of people, a lot of tiles, a lot of uh, tokens. <laughs> The game is free on Tabletopia, so you can play a digital version, a beta of the game, to test it, to see how awesome it is. I think it's a pretty cool game. And you can also download the, the, the PDF, the rule book with the PDF. There are some extra stuff here that you, you should look. Go to kickstarter.com and look for Avast and take a look at some of the stuff they have. The game will come with special dice, specially colored dice, a lot of cards, a lot of tiles, way too many tokens. <laughs> very colorful, very pretty tokens that are at the same time reminiscent of piracy uh, and uh, a life of adventure in the seas, but also very clearly colored to help you find which tokens you need, which tokens are yours and not. And there are, as I said, a cooperative scenario at, at least one but i think they want to make three or four in which there is a sea monster the first one for example is the kraken with a gigantic miniature it's still locked uh, but with more people participating on the kickstarter we can have it unlocked and all the players will combine forces to defeat the kraken and steal its treasure i think there up there there's more captains to be unlocked with the stretch goals more map tiles to be unlocked more more crew a special type of crew that are monster crews with special dice for them so yeah the project goes up until November 16 and they need $25,000 almost 100 backers already but they need more they need more of us you can support for only only one dollar just to follow up on the updates for $19 you get a high resolution print and play version and all unlock 3d models and content that you can 
print on a your own 3, 3D uh, printer. Uh, also a PDF of the art book of Avast. The art is, of this game is amazing. For $59, you get all digital rewards plus a physical copy of Avast and all stretch goals. And for $129, you get all digital, all digital reward, rewards, one copy of Avast and all unlocked stretch goals, one copy of Avast, Here Be Monsters, which is the expansion and all unlocked stretch goals and one booty box. The game will come in a special booty box just for you. They are predicting to start shipping July 2020. So the game is it's halfway ready. Of course, there might be some delays, but let's let's hope not. And let's make this project becomes a reality. Next project is Corpus Malicious, the Codex of Evil for D&D 5th edition. So what is Corpus Malicious? Do you remember uh, in the long distance past, I, I believe TSR did this once and Wizard of the Coast also tried that, making a codex for evil characters. I think they had a different logo. It, it was a uh, target to mature audiences so kids shouldn't get near the book. Uh, but it's been a while since uh, Wizards of the Coast uh, tried making this other side of D&D uh, play. So that's the proposition of Dream Realm Storytellers. That's the, their third Kickstarter project. It's called Corpus Malicious. It's a codex of evil for D&D. In it, you can explore the darker side of your D&D characters with uh, a supplement only and exclusively for evil characters. You uh, Inside of this book, it's more than 400 pages. You'll find dozens of new player character options from archetypes and races, from spells to rituals. And for the Dungeon Master, the book has new monsters, has coats, has villains, unique villains created in detail all thought about in a typical D&D scenario, but for evil player characters. Uh, there's also a Mindabar, the city of Malice, which is a scenario. Uh, it's an evil setting. You will find uh, a city ruled by an evil primordial and his prophet. His? It's prophet. It, it doesn't have gender. Uh, in Mindabar, you can discover the many aspects of evil inside the city. It's a cosmopolitan city that invites all sorts of scoundrels, murderers, forbidden spellcasters and more. It reminds me of... Uh, what's the name of that of the city in uh, Robert E. Howard's Conan? Um, the City of Thieves. I'll have to find it. Zamora. Mindabar reminds me of a version, a D&D version of Zambora. Okay, so there is a demo booklet that you can download. There's 50 pages of examples, so you can um, whet your appetite for evil characters. The art is amazing. The book is very well written, very well created. It's it. Oh, at the same time, it's. The design is different enough from the old TSR and the newer uh, Wizard of the Coast books that it will stand out in your collection. I'm not sure I like those games that try to imitate uh, page by page what Wizard of the Coast does. This is from a different company and should feel different in your bookshelf and in your table. Your player characters, your uh, players should be aware that you are using something else. Okay, so there are rules for degeneration in the game. There are rules for vampirism. There are rules for lycanthropy. There are rules for making sacrifices. And there, uh, there is a, a, a kind of economy project of soul trade that evil characters can uh, engage on. So you can create or become a create or become a vampire, a werewolf. You can explore uh, what does it mean to be that creature in a D&D game, but not just a monster, a character. Both players and dungeon masters can use the rules of sacrifice in the game to add both a mechanical aspect and a flavor aspect to their own 
evil game. Um, and also soul trade is obviously if you deal with demons and devils. Something, it's a staple on D&D. Usually the monsters here, you can... Um, participate in this economy we know that dem demons and devils on the vanilla dnd trade on souls but that's kind of abstract you never n nobody knows how to do it this book comes with the rules for that economy they also have 35 new archetypes in the base book for you to use on your characters new races three new races uh the um, uh fallen angel the remnant and the What's the other one? You have a Cotis, but Cotis is background. They're showing me only two of the three races. They must be here somewhere. Uh, we're able to create characters with uncommon interesting races, which can be plot materials or quest hooks on their wall, on their own fallen angel, which is a, 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 an angel that literally fell from grace, starts a new life with a lessened angelic uh, set of abilities the remnant you can experience shades of undeath by being a character who has died at some point in life but somehow refused to pass away i don't know where's the third um race anyhow backgrounds five new backgrounds the cultist the murderer <laughs> uh what else they are still holding on some for the stretch goals, I believe. Of course, new monsters. What kind of D&D supplement that would be without new and horrific monsters? And they are really disturbing some of those. New magic items, 50 new magic items. Also 15 coats with their own coatist that you can use as allies, as frenemies or as villains on your own game. Why not? You can be in an evil group of adventurers facing even eviler uh, cultists, monsters, <laughs> and 25 unique villains that you can use as the quote-unquote bosses for your own adventures. Look at this art. If you're listening, if you're if you're listening to this in the podcast, take a look at the Kickstarter and take a look at the art. It's it's D and D ish. It's fantastical, but also very dark. And but it with not without a that typical element of adventure. An excitement that we usually see on fantasy supplements for D&D. Occult flavor and tactics, tactics to your spellcaster characters or villains. There are 100 new spells and rituals. Never forget the evil nature of magic in some games. All right, uh, the setting I, I told you already about Mindabar, which is a city that you can use. So let's talk about the Kickstarter project itself. The base book requires 15, uh, 16 uh, pounds sterling, which is around 21, 20 dollars. You get Corpus Malicious in PDF, you get digital high quality wallpaper of the artwork and your name in the book. If you want, uh, the PDF and Mendabar in PDF, 22 pounds, which is 27 between 27 and 29 US dollars. For 40 pounds or around 50 uh, US dollars, you get the, the book in PDF, Mendabar in PDF, you get Corpus Malicious in hardcover, plus wallpaper of the artwork and your name in the credits. 54 pounds, which is 68, 70 US dollars. You get Corpus Malicious in hardcover, Mindabar in softcover, but, uh, plus the PDF version of both books. Wallpaper, your name in the, uh, in the uh, thank you page of the book. Uh, what else? There is a 666 US dollar um, Dark Monarch pledge level, which allows you to create your own Dark Monarch CR21. <laughs> wow. Uh, that will bring havoc to those to oppose you. You have six pages in Corpus Malicious to talk about your Dark Monarch. It's cult or princedom or other. <laughs> you participate in the book. Cool. Also, you get everything. The book in hardcover, the Mindabar setting in, in softcover, the PDF, your name in the credits, etc. There is, uh, where is the page of, or is the book here, here. So there's going to be an exclusive cover for Kickstarter made of full letter. Uh, and 
it's a collector's edition and then the game will be regularly i hope regularly published and released on retail but with a more normal less special less exclusive cover mindabar soft book here is here they also have as a dance a dungeon master screen uh, a dungeon pack and ah uh, here's the illustrators a lot of illustrations here the stretch goes all right they have a lot of stuff here a lot of stuff here new villains new magic items new monsters new archetypes and they are preparing more add-ons because this game is going strong they needed a little over ten thousand us dollars they are almost are almost at forty thousand us dollars and they uh, the kickstarter goes all the way to november the 14th so you have plenty of time to drool on this magnificent art here and choose which level you're going to support this is a great game if you are playing DD for a while now and want to mix it up a little bit all right those were my two projects let's wrap this up if you have any questions about the games we featured i featured just one person here uh or if you'd like to consider us a game on the podcast feel free to email us at the curators at gamerati.com you can also reach myself on twitter and facebook at gamerati the show notes for this episode and all our episodes are at the curators.gamerati.com you can also find the curators on apple podcasts google podcasts stitcher and spotify don't forget to check our curated page at kickstarter.com slash gamerati and youtube bye bye see you next week 